Good morning. It's a wonderful day when you can come to church because there's going to be days ahead of us that we're going to be, uh, there's going to be interference in coming to the Lord's house. Uh, pastor asked me to teach this morning and I'm always thrilled when, when God says, I want to use you and I want to be used especially in these last days. I want to be busy for the Lord. Uh, and we are in the last days. And that's refreshing to know because what's coming down the pike is very uh, frightening if you're not saved. If you're saved, it's wonderful. And one thing to remember is that in the past, Christians found it uh, found it thrilling to be able to suffer for the Lord, to be burned, to be flayed, be crucified. They were thrilled that God was going to allow them to be martyred for Him, and they would sing praises all the way up to the to their last breath. And that's, that's hard for us to say because I don't, and they didn't have the word of God like we have today. I mean, they were, a lot of them were walking Bibles. They memorized complete chapters and some of them complete, uh, were said to have mastered the whole Bible. But we're living in a different day. We're living in times where Christianity is kind of uh, watered down. But we're going to be looking at the religion of today, and it's called, and I call this the religion of Cain. If you want to go to, to uh, Genesis chapter 4. In Genesis chapter 4, we're going to read the whole entire, we're going to go through the whole chapter. And it's going to be fast. And if you need to take notes, you can watch it on video later and because it's going to be quick. But the world has went into a complete circle from the time of Cain to the time we're in now. Everything is identical to what he, the world was then as it is now. And we're going to be looking at that. And people say, well, the technology is so much greater. And I said, no. A lot of the technology we were finding or we're seeing today came from things that happened before the flood. They dig it out of the ground, they re-engineer it, and then they put it on your plate. But just ask if you ever get a chance to talk to an archaeologist, talk to them about it. They're not allowed to talk openly about it. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. When Adam sinned, sin took over. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, for it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. I can't teach this by myself, Lord. I, I don't have no ability. But Lord, if you're with me, I, I can get through this. And I pray that I get all the points that you want me to, to give. Blessed be your holy and righteous name. And let your name be exalted above all names. For I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hell, fire, and brimstone preaching is what made America great. The bloody religion made America great. It made every country that preached the hell, fire, and brimstone message, a great country, a prosperous country. But because of this is not being done today, our cities are turning into hell holes. 
After 2,000 years of modern history, we're reduced to panicking and shutting down our churches for a virus that 99% of the people survive. We panic when we don't have enough toilet paper. I mean, really, we do. You go to my, my house, we got piles of it now. I mean, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I'm not hurting a bit. <laughs> We're willing to close the churches for this virus. We're forced to wear masks. And if you do any studying about satanic religions, whenever they do a ceremony, everybody wears masks. So what are we, what's, what's going on? When you read the book of martyrs, you see all these people that are willing to die. And they don't fear death, they fear God. And they want to please God. Today we have a real hatred for God. And everyone that says they're a Christian, their, their desire for God is wax cold. You talk to people and they get offended when you talk to them about the Lord. Well, let's face it. Today we don't fear death. We don't fear God. We fear death. And for a Christian, that's a shame. I was talking to a brother back here talking about things that are going on in the world. And I said, you know, I'm going to heaven. I don't care how I get there. I just want to get there as soon as I can. That's my desire. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam and Eve, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from God. Eve assumed that Cain was the Messiah. She assumed that he was going to take her sins away and restore everything back to the way it was. It can be assumed that Eve cuddled Cain, just like our children today. Everyone is so cuddled. That's one thing I can say I wasn't cuddled. I was, I was, uh, my dad was a very disciplinarian. And if you didn't dig a ditch deep enough and, and the way he wanted it, you got your tan, you got your hide tanned. Uh, when I went to school, I had seen the principal several times. I wasn't cuddled. My son here was never cuddled. He can tell you that. My wife cuddled him, not me. If there's any, if there are any flaws you'll find in him, it's not me. It's, it's her. <laughs> but Cain was cuddled. And just like the, the, the doctrine of the firstborn in the Bible, when you look at the firstborn all through the Bible, it goes, the set, it goes to the secondborn because the firstborn always screws up. You know why? Because it, God's showing you, you need a new birth. You don't need the first birth. You need the second birth. The second birth will get you to heaven. The first birth, you're stillborn after Adam. When you look at... People say, well, you know, I had guys tell me one time, well, Shem was the firstborn. And I said, no, he wasn't. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 21, it says, Japheth the elder. Japheth was the elder, not Shem. So it, goes to the, it always goes to the secondborn. That's why the second birth is taught all through the Bible. It's, a type, it's part of the typology of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 10, uh, verse 21, or chapter 4, verse 2, it says, And she again bare a son, brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a hard worker. He was disciplined uh, as, a, as a hard worker. He had every row right down the line. If you've ever seen people plow, 
they, they pick out a point and they go right for that point and they keep that line straight and they, they do it all the way down, to, down the line so that they're, uh, when they try to harvest, it doesn't mess them up. You know, it's, it's hard to harvest corn when you're doing this. But uh, they, uh, he was very disciplined and he was, uh, he loved his crops and he was proud of it. Just like a lot of us, we're, we're proud. You know, we, we say, we're, oh, no, I'm very humble. No, we're very proud. That's our, that's our flaw. He wanted God's, God to compliment him on his, his produce, his works, how well he was doing. However, Cain, when he offered, he offered fruit and vegetables to God. The ground is cursed. He was offering a cursed thing to God. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 it says, And Adam said, because, or he said unto Adam, Because thou hast done, uh, hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I command thee, thou shalt not eat or thou shalt eat, not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. God was doing Adam a favor by cursing the ground. That was his punishment. Verse 3, it says, In the process of time it came to pass, Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offered it to the Lord. Here I am, Lord. I got these big old carrots that are two foot long. I got this cabbage that you have to carry in with a wheelbarrow. Look at this, Lord. Look what I've done. He was proud of it. And just like all of us, when we offer the best and it's rejected, boy, does that hurt your feelings? Well, Cain's feelings were hurt. But God did not ask for vegetables. He asked for blood. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. Blood of a sinless creature... A lamb of one year old without blemish from his own flock. That's what God demands. You've got to have blood. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, Abel, he also brought the firstling of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. And undoubtedly, Cain knew exactly what... God required. But like all of us, we think we know more than God. And we think, well, you know, look at all these works I've done. Man, God's got to accept it. Look how, how wonderful I am. He's going to accept me. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You never try to second-guess God. You go to His Word. His Word is true. And if you go anywhere else, if you, I don't care if you have visions every night, if you have dreams every night, go to the Word of God. Everything has to go with the Word of God. God does not send angels down to talk to us. He doesn't do that. He will in the tribulation... But now we have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. He was mad at God. Verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain... Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost not dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. A lot of us, we get mad at God because He doesn't answer the prayer the way we want to, and we get mad at Him, and, and 
we, we say things that we really don't want to say. But here it's saying sin lieth at the door. And sin lieth at every man's door. And it says, and unto thee shall be his desire. Once sin gets into your life and iniquity sets in, everything else is, goes to dung. Everything starts falling apart. Your life is a ruin. And, and I pray for these, these young people because once sin gets into your life, you're messed up for a while until you come back to God. But instead of Cain saying, Lord, I'm sorry, let me go get a lamb and I'll, I'll take care of this. He got mad at God. He got angry because he, in, he was insulted. And a lot of people would stop coming to church on Sundays or on completely because they feel like they were insulted. The preacher was preaching towards me. You better believe he was. I get a, I, I said on this fourth row, I get, I get full, full whammies every once in a while. But sin will rule over you. And sin is controlled by Satan, and he'll make a mess out of you. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 says, For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and adultery because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath rejected thee from being king. Saul was stubborn. He, he didn't obey God. And God says it's, he counts it as witchcraft. But that's not all. When you get to Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? What is the truth? God's word is truth. And the world is taking God's word and throwing it out the door. They don't believe in truth anymore. They don't believe in the King James 1611 fully loaded Bible. And these were people that saw Jesus Christ crucified and saw him rise again. And, and they were already being uh, bewitched. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, it says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass that when he was in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Why did he go after Abel? He was mad at God. When God created man, he created us in his image. Cain attacked Abel, but he was actually attacking God. And he slew his own brother. The world is mad at God. And they're attacking. They're killing people all over this country. I mean, it's amazing how many people are dying. How many people are getting... It's not safe to go to a city. We're getting a lot of people from up north moving down here because it seems to be safer. I, hope, I pray it is. Pray for your policemen. They need your prayer, especially in this day and age. But once since sin was introduced into the world, whatever you think you're not capable of, you are capable of it in the right circumstances. You've got to guard, be on guard all the time. We see later that the killing of the righteous is a part of of the religion of Cain. And we're, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the religion of Cain. I want it my way. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 5, it says, God says, sure, and surely your, your blood, or surely your blood of your lives, oh no, excuse me. Genesis chapter 9 verse 5. This is what God says about murder. He says, Surely your blood and of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it at 
at the hand of the man, at the hand of every man, his brother, will I require the life of the man. Whosoever sheds the man, uh, man's blood, by him shall his blood be shed. Now, if you've ever been in law enforcement or corrections or anything like that, you understand that murderers today are not killed for murdering people. They're not, their lives are not taken. They're not executed like they're supposed to be. When this country was founded, they'd take a murderer and they would, they would take a, a, have a public square and they would hang him with an audience because they wanted everyone to see what happens to a murderer. And murders weren't nearly what they are today because we, we basically pat people on the back and give them uh, room and board and, and uh, keep them in hotels for, for a number of years. But what God says about this blood, he says, so in Numbers chapter 35, verse 33, it says, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood, except that it sheddeth, uh, excuse me, it, that sh is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. In order to cleanse your land from the murder of that blood, you have to take the life of the person who took the life. Now, I believe that when, when a prisoner goes to prison, give them the gospel. They give them Bibles. I believe in capital punishment because God believes in capital punishment. Get them saved and, and then execute them. Because if what we have today our land is polluted, and we're, we're suffering from it. Look what happens to uh, uh, Cain when this land is polluted. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Not only Cain is a murderer, but he's a rebellious liar. He's lying to God. He's being sarcastic to God. No respect. A lot like our, what we're seeing today. You street preachers, when you get out there, they, they get in your face. They have no respect for God. They don't care. They think you're a fool. Genesis chapter 4 verse 10 says, And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy Brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth. You're cursed. Which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hands. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Here this guy kills his brother. Now he's a, 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 a vagrant. He, he's wandering around all over the place. He can't get anything to grow anymore. He loved to grow crops. Now he can't because sin is at the door. We're looking at what's happening to America with all this these killings. If you haven't been keeping up with it, they're talking about a food shortage. They're talking about a lot of things happening. You look all over the country. If you go on Zoom Earth, sometime go on there, and it's got a thing that says forest fires and, you know, cloud cover. Hit the forest fires. Fires are going on all over the world. It's unprecedented. Every year they say it's unprecedented. Isn't that right? The flooding that's going on at the same time, unprecedented. 
They don't. They say we don't. We're not having rain. We're having torrential downpours, where flooding is is unbelievable. All you have to do is go online and look up the flooding going on around the world, and it will scare you to death. Think, oh my, there's poor people. But that's where we're living at. The Bible says in Amos chapter uh, four seven it says. And also I have for uh, withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And he says, I caused it to rain over he here in this little spot and not rain here. Then I make it rain over here, but not over here. And isn't that what we're saying? I mean, we don't have rains like we used to when I was growing up. It would rain for days. And it's not doing that anymore. Something's happening. It's not climate change. It's sin. Sin has caused this. We've, we've brought a curse upon our nation by not punishing the guilty. Back in, uh, I think it was 92 when O.J. Simpson, I said after that trial, I, I told somebody, I said, from that point on, we're not going to have any justice in this country. And we haven't. Verse 13, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of the land from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. Because they want the, 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 the curse to come off. The blood has to be revenged. And the Lord said unto him, He had mercy on Cain. Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on him, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Marks are found all over the Bible. When, when the uh, 144,000 are sent to this earth, whether they're here or they're sent down. I don't know. There, there's two different teachings on this. But they'll have a mark on them. You'll find that in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. The Antichrist has a mark. Everything that you see happening today is about the mark. They're, they're talking about passports. They're, they know that Christians aren't going to take, no, take these passports. They don't want them. They don't want, the, some, most of us don't want the jab. They got protests all over the world right now protesting these passports. What, what you'll probably see is they'll take it away and they'll bring it right back until people accept it and it's all this is re, is bringing in a mark first they want to put it on your cell phone then they want to put it on your person now don't be afraid don't be if you study this stuff the mark comes three and a half years into the tribulation not now but the genetic engineering that's going on, God's going to have to take us out of here. So, whoopee, I'm going home. <laughs> Leviticus, everybody, but everybody wants a mark. But Leviticus, God warns the Jews not to take a mark in verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 28. Genesis chapter 4 verse 16 says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. If you get a map and you try to figure this out, if you go east of Eden, which Eden was 600 miles, this 650 miles up, up the side towards Lebanon, then it gets up to the Euphrates River and comes down 650 miles into uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, down to the Euphrates River, or to the Nile River, 
and then it goes all the way across the bottom. That's, that's the promised land. It's Eden. It was Eden at one time. So you go east of that, and it takes you to pa Pakistan and Persia, and it could go as far as India. Nobody really knows. But when you look at that, and you look at that area today, most of your world religions come from that area, just like Cain. Cain built a city there. It was the only city in the pre-flood area. There was no other city. Something like Babel, a one-world government, a one-world religion, and hopefully we can get through this. But in this land, Cain fulfilled the lust of the flesh. And we're going to, we're going to see that here in, in just a few minutes. From the beginning, man reacts the same in his rebellion towards Almighty God. This is the religion of Cain. If the world gives you lemons, make lemonade. Make it better. But when a man comes to, to himself and comes to Christ, he says, don't give me the lemons, give me Jesus. And that's what I want. Jesus has been awful good to me. I mean, I can't complain a bit. The Lord Jesus Christ. When man comes to himself, he wants Jesus. If you look at the same, at this as, as a lost world is today, common sense will tell you, since I'm a, a vagabond and a, uh, I've been kicked out and it's, I've been marked, let's, let's just make life better. Let's make it more comfortable. Let's create an, uh, a world for myself so that all the lusts of my flesh can be fulfilled while I'm still alive. So Cain leaves the presence of the Lord and he, had, he, had, he finds a wife. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. And if you look at the names of, of uh, Cain's children, they pretty similar to what Seth line shows all the way down to Noah. But she conceived and he built a city. And the name of this city was Enoch. He named it after his son. Logic says, okay, I can't grow crops anymore. Let's create a city where people can bring their goods buy, sell, trade, and be entertained. Now, when this city was built, it doesn't really give you a time date. So if it was 200 years after he got there, Adam's descendants were already at the 40,000 or more era. So there's, there's a lot of people in that, that one little area east of Eden. You say, well, how do you figure that out? There's a, there's a thing that they don't teach anymore, hardly. There's some of the people in this church know about it, but it's called the Fibonacci Code. And this code is called the Golden Ratio. A lot of engineers learn it. But it shows you how populations grow in the number of years and whatever. But it's also, it shows you how everything was created. It's God's signature. And if you want to take a look at that, I got it up here. I got up here a mark, the Greek word for 666, and the uh, Arab word for 666 is basically the same, except it's reversed and turned upside down. But they, it, this, all the symbols are there. It's kind of weird. But the last word in, in 666 is stigma. That means mark. Isn't that amazing? In Genesis chapter uh, 4, 
he builds a city, he starts having sons, and he has, he has all these, uh, my wife told me not to go over, so I'm going to have to skip some stuff. We have, we get down to Lamech in verse 18. And Lamech is just like his father Cain. In verse 19 it says, And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of his one was Adah, Adah, and the name of his other was Zelah. I bet that was confusing. (laughs) If he said da, you know, she would come. And if he said zel, she would come, you know. But he was a real tyrant. He was head over heels in love with himself. Just like Cain. Thought he knew more than anybody. But during this same time that he was building this city... We have to remember Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters of men were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men and saw that they were fair and took themselves wise, all that which they chose. So this city had technology. I mean, they find... In that same area, India and in that area, they find evidence of nuclear war. They dig up things underground that resemble flying ships. They find bones that are radioactive. They find a lot of stuff over there that says that things weren't quite like we're taught in school. And there's a Mr. Uh, Wilcock, he can probably tell you a lot of this stuff. Yeah. He's very well versed in this stuff. They wrote, they, they find the vitrified lights, basically, the shuttle and sand has been used to the point that it turned into lights. Yes. And large scale uh, objects. Yeah, that's radioactive t- activity, extreme heat. Uh, in Genesis chapter, it says, in, in verse 4, it says, And the giants were, uh, and there were giants in the earth in those days, and after that, the sons of God came as daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, men of, mighty men of renown. So what is that? That's transhumanism. That's taking uh, DNA from one and mixing it with another, and you're creating a new race of people. And you say, well, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, (laughs) you need to see some of the bones that I've seen. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 20, it says, And Adah bare Jabal, and he he lived in tents, and he had cattle. He was probably the first cowboy. And it's probably, more than likely, because of Satan involved, that he was probably one of the first cattle worshipers, or cow worshipers. But here again, we got a city, we got cattle, we got milk and cheese and a lot of the stuff that most people don't have. And then here comes along uh, Jubal, his brother, and he deals with harps and organs and music. So you got a city with food. You got a city that people come to to trade their goods. You have a city where you got music and entertainment, dancing, and of course, sex. And then Zilla, she also bear Tubal Cain, and then struck. Struffers, uh, instructor of artifers, I, I was trying to get ready for, for this word, in brass, he was basically a blacksmith. He dealt with metals. He had a refinery. And look what it says here, just in the last part of this verse, it says, and the sister Tubal-Cain was Nabal, or Nabal. 
Now, if you do some studying on her, you'll find that she was probably a very beautiful woman, and she married a giant, or a, an angel. And she, she was part of the giant culture back then. So you have a city with food, entertainment, and now you have refineries, factories, and jobs. And remember, Nephilim technology. What do you see in common here? In our world today, we see the mixing of DNA. We see extraterrestrials supposed to come down and take us all. And, but for years and years, you've seen stories of abductions and intermixing some scary stuff. You also see uh, mixing of seeds. You know, when you look at Genesis chapter 6, it wasn't just the Nephilim, but it was the animals. They were mixing with the animals. They were creating a hydra race. That's why God says, I'll have to kill every man and beast and all the trees and all the stuff. I'm going to have to kill it all. Because they weren't satisfied with just man. They wanted to go after the beast. And Satan went after the plants. And what are we doing today? People look on the package. Well, it's got GMO. I don't want it. Or, you know, they look at all this stuff and they wonder what in the world they're eating anymore. I saw... Uh, a, a woman in one of these South American countries, she made a video of a cabbage that she took apart, and it was basically like plastic. What have they done to that, that piece of cabbage? There's a real hatred for God, just like there was back then. God said, I... I can't deal with this. I'm going to have to destroy man. But, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The question is, have you found grace? Do you know him? Are you, are you ready for his coming? We're, on the, we're right on the edge of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. Every every prophetic preacher that I have any respect for at all is saying the intimate, the um, immediate return of the Lord Jesus Christ because He is not going to allow them to change your DNA. He's not going to allow His bride to be altered in any way. Yeah, this body's going to go into dust and it's going to be burnt up, but God is not going to allow it. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 23, it says, In the latter times, and I want you to pay attention to this, because this is pretty interesting here. In the latter times of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. These transgressors have been around for a long time. We call them the elite. We call them the deep state. We call them all these nasty words, but no one ever does anything about them because they're transgressing to the point where they're bringing the world to a point where the Antichrist can stand up and take over. That's what all this mess is about. It says here, And when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents will stand uh, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. So what you're seeing right now is all this stuff coming together. And it looks scary. And it is. But we got a Savior. And that Savior is going to save us. I can't wait. We are going to leave a bloody mess when we leave. 
The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We're going to be changed. Everything's going to be changed about us. We're going to be taken up. And we're going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ, giving an account for what we've done for Him. I can't wait. Are you excited as I am? Yes. I just can't wait. I, I, I'm just thrilled that to, to be able to say, I lived in the last days. But one thing you've got to remember is that He's coming. He won't come too early, and He won't come too late. But He's coming, and I'm looking for Him any time. Uh, I wish I could have finished my whole thing, but oh well. But anyway, if you study the religion of Cain, you'll see it today. We're back, back where we started before the, before the flood and before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, thank you for being so faithful to us, Lord. Lord, help us to be faithful to you, Lord. Help us to be able to stand in the days of, of these perilous times that we're living in, Lord. Help us to spread the gospel. Help us not to be weary. Help us not to faint, but help us to stand. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the pastor as he preaches today, Lord. If there be anyone here that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, I pray that they come today for salvation. Lord, time is wasting, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Amen.